Wait a minute, haven't we shot this exact video before? Like, I'm getting this really weird vibe of deja vu. Sitting on a tank. Like, exactly like this. With you beside me. Yeah. Yeah, it does seem huh. oddly familiar. But you know, I have this fuzzy recollection that it was a black tank. You're right. And these are blue. It was our septic video. It was our septic video. But this video's not about poop. That's what makes this video better. Yay! <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about cisterns. We wanted to make a video because, in case you are new to following us, we're developing an off-grid homestead from scratch. And we're finally working on something permanent. We're working on our permanent water solution. And this is the beginnings of that system. So we wanted to make a video about cisterns, some of the decision making, the technology, some commonly asked. No, 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 it'll be interesting. No, 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 it's not about poop. It's about water. Think <laughs> hot, long, hot showers. Mm, do I have I your do attention? Like, I do like those. I have your attention keep now? Going, All right, going, we got going. her back in the game. So we wanted to share a little bit about the decision-making process on cisterns. Let's get started. Before we get started though, we just want to point out this video is not about wells. This video is not about the plumbing of this system. It's not about water treatment. It's about cisterns. We just want to point that out so you don't watch the entire video and think, gosh, I had questions about those things and they weren't answered in this video. We do hope to do videos on those subjects and add them to a playlist. So down the road, look for a playlist that covers our off-grid water system and hopefully we'll be able to answer those questions for you. If you're watching this video, you may have a lot of questions about materials, components, or even system design. But unfortunately, Alyssa and I, we're not engineers. And there's no way we could possibly know all the variables for a system that you're designing. So we encourage you to do research just like we did. We'll try to provide some links in the description below, and we may also link to a blog post where we can share some of the resources we found to be really helpful. But if at that point you're still not sure about certain factors in your design, we encourage you to contact an engineer who can help you design the perfect system for your needs. Why cisterns? In short, coffee. Lots and lots of coffee. 2,000 gallons of coffee. When we first arrived on our property, we didn't have much. We actually did a video on our first year water solution, and it was very primitive to say the least. I'm not saying there were water wars. No, mine, my water, mine. No, I have, I'm thirsty, I have to pee. I want a shower. Between that system and this system, we did have an interim solution, and we did a video on that too. The benefit to having water storage is that even if you are able to develop your own water source, you still have a supply on hand if something were to happen to that source. Right now, our water source is actually a community water source. It's pretty reliable. But even later on, when we develop our own source, it's a wise idea to have some backup capacity on hand. The benefit of having such a large capacity of water on hand is that no matter what your source is, whether it's a well or a community water supply or even a public utility, is that there's, if there's ever a problem with those water sources, you still have a reliable amount of capacity. You see, the majority of the world has so much faith in their water system that very few people actually have any kind of water on hand. They hope that system never has a problem and that includes municipal water systems and wells. So is a cistern a replacement for a water source? Not necessarily. We're actually designing our property and this system to work off of a future water source, which will most likely be a well. But even if we have that well, we will still have a substantial amount of water storage available should we ever have a problem with it. We're also keeping in mind that we may not be the forever owners of this property, and this system would work just as well if a future owner or ourselves decided to tie into a public utility, because if there were ever a problem with that utility, we'd still have our cisterns. Cisterns have another benefit, and that is when you develop your supply, it doesn't need to be a robust supply in order to meet the needs of your household. So in our case, when we do get around to developing our supply, 
which will probably be a well. It doesn't have to be a gusher in order to meet our household's needs because that supply can slowly keep up with the demand on the cistern. But when the cistern, or when we have demand, the cistern can actually meet that demand. These types of systems work really well for rain catchment, snow catchment, developing seeps, springs, or even a really low flow well. Cisterns also allow you to tiptoe into developing a more robust water system. So for example, for us, we do not have a water supply on our property. So we have to source our water elsewhere, which we get from a community water supply. But even if we had a neighbor who was willing to offer us water, we could get our water there and then store it in our cisterns to be used as we need it. The beautiful thing about our system is that it's gravity fed. So because we're off grid, we can pump the water on demand to the top of our hill, but then as we consume the water, it's provided for by gravity. We get our pressure from gravity, which is always on and doesn't require any electricity. So using these systems is a great way to work your way into a more robust permanent water system. Why did we go with plastic tanks instead of something like metal or concrete or maybe even ferro cement? The simple answer is ease of installation. We talked to a company locally who offers concrete tanks and they said, no problem, we can get it to you, no problem. We said, okay, great, we just need it on top of that hill. To which they said, ah, that's probably not gonna work. So, for the simplicity of installation, these plastic tanks weigh about 500 pounds or even a little bit less, which means we can't really lift them, but with the excavator that we use to create this hole, it's not a problem to gently put them in the hole. A concrete tank, weighs thousands of pounds. We ran into this problem when we did our driveway project when we had ecology blocks delivered. It was everything we could do with the biggest piece of equipment we could rent locally to just lift them, let alone carry them up and traverse the hillside and gently put them in the hole. In case you're a career-oriented person and you're too busy to walk your cistern, I'm now renting Alyssa out as a cistern walker. What is the salary range for a cistern walker? No match found. Huh. Um, what are the career advancement opportunities for a cistern walker? No match found. Hmm. Of all the plastic tank manufacturers available in the United States, we chose to go with an infiltrator tank. There are some unique features that Infiltrator offers that we could not find with any other manufacturer. The number one reason that we chose Infiltrator is they offer a feature we couldn't find anywhere else, and that is the ability to direct bury these tanks with no special backfill. Uh, typically, when you look at poly tanks, there's some pretty complex backfill requirements that must be done to both bed the tank very carefully and then you have to you fill the tank before backfilling with water and then you have to use special fill when um, filling around the tanks and infiltrator is unique that way they have designed their tanks to be corrugated and they also have fi fiberglass supports inside the tank that allow them to be extremely strong being the only tank we're aware of on the market that you can simply install and fill and you're completely done. I just want to be clear that Infiltrator does have some pretty extensive instructions on how to properly install their tanks. So if you're thinking about uh, installing an Infiltrator, be sure to consult the directions included with the tank and follow them for the best results. Another feature of Infiltrator that we really liked was that this tank is actually rated for potable water use and meets the NSF and the ANSI 61 standard. Why bury the cistern? The first is water quality. When it's in the ground, the temperature is more stable, stably cool that is, so less icky things will tend to grow there. Security. When our tanks are underground, it's probably still possible to mess with them, but it's a lot less easy than a tank that sits above the ground like this. Because let's be honest, cute little padlocks like this, they really just keep an honest man honest. And last, burying cisterns prevents freezing. By putting them below the frost line, which for us is 24 inches, it prevents our water from freezing like this. Today, when we came up to shoot this video, our valve was busted and our tank 
empty. This. This is why we bury cisterns. Cistern sizing is also another important factor that you need to consider in designing a water system. Because we've been living like this for a little over a year, we're pretty comfortable with our water usage at right around 100 gallons per week for two people. So the interim water solution that we had would last us about two and a half to three weeks before we would need to add water. That's because we wanted to keep it above 50%. That way we had a little bit of reserve in case we couldn't get water or there was a problem with our water supply. With these uh, cisterns that we installed, we have a little over 2,000 gallons, which should give us between two and three months of water on hand. If you size the system too small, you'll end up having to feed it more often. If it's too large, you run into water quality problems. So those are some things to think about. And for us, uh, 2,000 gallons is a pretty good supply. That's two to three months. We shouldn't really run into any water quality problems because our consumption is good. Uh, and we shouldn't have to be feeding the system constantly. How do we fill the cisterns? We use a tank to transport water from a community water source. And then we use this little pump to get it to the top of the hill. What do cisterns cost? Simply put, expect to pay about a dollar per usable gallon. So you might find a cistern that's say rated at 1700 gallons, but it might only have a usable gallonage around 1500. So you'd probably expect to pay about $1,500 for that cistern. Do keep in mind though, that cisterns are oftentimes the cheapest part of this entire system. So make sure to take the time to do the budgeting for the entire system before you get started. If you're looking for more information on water storage and water system design, this book is what we have used to design our system. It is easy to read, easy to understand, has lots of pictures, and sorry, there's no coloring section, but we will provide a link to it below this video. So that about does it for cisterns. Is there a perfect water system? Not really. I mean, both longevity on the tank, the burial, the cost, there's no such thing as a perfect water system. So it comes down to figuring out what works best for your household, your budget, and probably most importantly, your skill level. We're gonna learn a lot through developing this water system. And who knows, if we get a chance to build another one, we might do it completely different or exactly the same. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this video. We have a lot more videos to come on this system and hopefully we'll get them all together in a playlist so you can enjoy them all. If you enjoyed watching this video, please subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. We have a lot more development on the Off Grid Homestead too. Follow us on our Facebook and Instagram and our blog. We'll put all those links below. We'll see you in the next video.